the Caldigit TS3 Plus Thunderbolt 3 dock from 2018 versus OWC's Thunderbolt Hub from 2020, which here represents most Thunderbolt 4 docks these days. Because they're in a similar price range, I've been getting questions about how these two compare, since one is more popular and the other has newer ports. Spoiler, it depends on what you use it for, but in most cases, for most people, a Thunderbolt 4 dock is more flexible and future-proof. I'll show you how, to me, the ever-reigning Caldigit TS3 Plus is no longer needed. There are pros and cons to both, but OWC's Thunderbolt dock wins in comparison. Of course, this is my opinion, for my personal use, so it's out there to consider. I'd be happy to keep the TS3 if you can convince me in the comments below. Give this a like if it helps, and subscribe for more. First is the value. The TS3 is now $289.99, compared to most Thunderbolt 4 docks, not to be confused by hubs, starting at $279, with this OWC Thunderbolt dock. It seems the prices of all these docks in general have gone up lately. Screen capture this side-by-side -side chart in case you need it. Most obvious are the updated ports, when you can get a future-proof dock for a similar price. OWC's USB-A ports uses three USB 3.2 at 10 gigabits per second in the back, compared to Caldigit's 3.1 Gen 1 at 5 gigabits per second. OWC has an extra USB 2 at 480 megabits per second in front, while Caldigit has a faster USB-A and C at 5 gigabits per second. That Thunderbolt port on the front of OWC's dock is only for connecting and charging your computer while Caldigits is in the back, blending in with the other ones, which is actually a cleaner look. Thunderbolt's the fastest speed you can get right now. It uses a USB-C type connector, which both docks seem to have. The difference is OWC uses four Thunderbolt ports, again, one for connecting and charging your computer, and Caldigit uses only two Thunderbolt 3 ports, one for your computer. They both transfer data up to 40 gigabits per second, so how would you connect a Thunderbolt display and an external Thunderbolt drive with one dock? It seems like more of a challenge with Caldigit, not the best solution for Thunderbolt. So you can't transfer data with a Thunderbolt drive while using a Thunderbolt monitor. Of course, you can use the other USB-C ports, but it sacrifices speed. Since this dock is made for stationary use, I'm thinking many people who have it will use a monitor. They both use Gigabit Ethernet, which isn't the best out there, but it's what you'll get now for a Thunderbolt 4 for some reason. Both use the same SD card reader. For the front, Caldigit uses a UHS-2 SD card slot, one port audio in jack, and one port audio out. One USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 at 10 gigabits per second, display for connection, optical audio out. Thunderbolt 4 docks in general seem to be shaped longer, where its design encourages you to keep it flat. The power brick on both are actually very big, as expected with docks of this bandwidth. Here's my setup for both. I use an M1 MacBook Pro with only two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports, so I need a dock to attach multiple peripherals for video editing and common tasks. Caldigit uses one Thunderbolt 3 port in the back to connect to your laptop which is commonly preferred for a cleaner look, while charging up to 85 watts. I'm using a Thunderbolt 4 cable, which acts like a Thunderbolt 3 with this dock. OWC uses a Thunderbolt 4 port in front to connect, which distinguishes it from the other Thunderbolt ports, but is less attractive. That's why I usually place it underneath my laptop. Again, it charges 5 watts higher at up to 90 watts. In real life, I can hardly tell the difference though. For my double display setup, I need to connect my 4K HDR display with a DisplayPort 1.2. And since my laptop natively supports one display, I add a USB-A to HDMI DisplayLink adapter to make a second display work using the USB-A port. I also had the alternate choice of getting an adapter with the USB-C. It was only necessary when I switched it back to one display. I'm able to do this with both. Gigabit Ethernet has been great for when I need fast internet speeds. Ever tried uploading 4K HDR videos on YouTube? Yeah, they're huge because of the required format. You seriously save so much time. Let's do a couple of tests to see if there's a difference in speed between these two. We're going to test it with just Wi-Fi and then 
the cable. I'm at my office here and we have pretty good Wi-Fi, but I've seen it higher before. We're gonna do another test after this. All right, we got similar results for both. So let's do one with the ethernet cable. Cat 8 ethernet cable. Wow, that's a big jump. Let's do it one more time. Pretty consistent. Now let's do it on a different dock, on the Benbolt 4 dock. I'm gonna go here with my table to the OWC dock. Isn't that a bit under? Let's try it again. Especially the upload looks a little lower than the cow digit. All right. So now the 2021 iPad Pro with the M1 chip with the cow digit dock. Um, I can only attach one display at a time with it and it just mirrors it and that's it. So a limitation for iOS 14 and hopefully something that will change in iOS 15 in one of its updates. All right, let's go. Wow, and this is with the ethernet cable attached. So here we get pretty high scores, uh, higher than the MacBook Pro scores that we got earlier. This is with the ethernet cable attached to the CalDigit dock. Thunderbolt 4 or 3, it's the same kind of speed, so that's not affecting anything. Um, they're both at 40, up to 40 megabits per second, which they say the iPad really isn't getting right now with the iOS. So next we'll try it with just only Wi-Fi. Let's go. Full press go. This just answers it. If you're editing video, you want to upload it to YouTube, for example, um, you can use an ethernet cable, make it faster for you. Or if you just want faster internet, download, upload, it's gonna be a lot faster. For the front side of the CalDigit dock, the SD card reader was an important requirement to transfer photos and video from my DSLR. There's an audio and video jack that's separate, which means you can attach a separate mic and headphones at the same time. But you can't attach headphones with a built-in mic, like for gaming and such. OWC has that combined port, and you can connect your headphones to your computer's jack anyway. I sometimes use CalDigit's slower USB-C and USB-A ports in front for charging, connecting a mouse, keyboard, mobile devices, and such. OWC only has a USB 2.0 at 0.48 gigabits per second, which is slower, but you don't really use it for data transfer anyway. That's what the back ports are for. I never used CalDigit's digital optical audio in the back, though I can imagine it being convenient for others. OWC doesn't even have one, but I guess you can use an adapter with a several USB ports. That's more to spend on though. The four USB-A ports on the back at five gigabits are plenty on CalDigit. OWC only has three in the back, but at 10 gigabits. And there's rarely an instance when I use three at once because I hardly use USB-A anyway. For CalDigit, since one of the Thunderbolt ports are already occupied by the computer, there's only one left. So I'd like to leave it open for external Thunderbolt drives or a display. Displays don't work on the USB-C port, but it does on the Thunderbolt. Not really an issue for the OWC dock since there are three open Thunderbolt 4 ports in the back with a computer connection in front. Thunderbolt 4 also adds to more flexibility compared to Thunderbolt 3. Pause and check out this chart with a brief summary of benefits. Of course, including backwards compatibility with any type of USB-C to date. So with this dock, I just leave a USB-C cable ready to connect to anything from external drives to mobile devices like my iPad. And it's nice to be able to transfer between two USB-C or Thunderbolt drives without having to disconnect anything. Also convenient to often have an open port. 
Sometimes data transfer speeds differ per dock. Let's see if there's any difference here and by how much. We transfer between two external drives. Uh, one is an SSD, this one's an SSD, transferring it to the hard drive. We're going to do it three different ways, first without any dock, and then we'll do it with each of the docks. So first we want to see how it is without the docks, how fast it'll transfer data. It's just going to be a 1.82 gigabyte file. Here we go. All right, now we're doing the exact same thing, transferring from the SSD to the hard drive and then back again. Same file, but this time we're using the OWC Thunderbolt dock. Thunderbolt 3 should be the same speed as Thunderbolt 4. These are not Thunderbolt external drives at all. So in theory, it should be the same speed. So let's see what actually happens. All right, timer set and let's go. Fifteen seconds, so same results as before without the docs. All right, so this is the other way around now. Timer set and reset that. There you go. That was actually eighteen seconds. So I'm just gonna say about the same. This time with the CalDigit dock. Here we go. And go. I'm gonna add a second to that. I'm gonna say 14 seconds. Now the other way around. CalDigit wins with data transfer speeds. But, you know, again, it's, it's not that much of a difference. So yeah, that's interesting. Let's move on to the Blackmagic speed test. So this is a Blackmagic disk speed test. We already did a real world test and it gives us a good number of how fast per drive. Let's see what happens. Actually, that's the highest I've ever seen it so far, like ever. Earlier it was like 400 something, so I'm not sure why it suddenly is so high. I mean, I guess that's good. There you go. That's more like it. Yeah, so I get around the same numbers uh, without the dock, just using the M1 MacBook Pro. Let's test that T7 this time with the Thunderbolt dock. It's not what it used to be. In my last video testing, uh, reviewing this doc, I didn't really do a black magic test, but someone did comment and ask for it. So then I gave him scores that are actually like a hundred higher than this, like 150 higher per write and read. That was back in, I want to say December. So this is interesting that it's actually lower this time than my M1 MacBook Pro. And now the M1 MacBook Pro is faster just using the external drives on the dock. All right, this last test, we're finally comparing it to the CalDigit dock using Blackmagic. I'm just gonna say 490 average for right which is still better than all of them. So I'm getting the best scores on this CalDigit dock, which is actually older than the other devices. So when it comes to USB-C drives, CalDigit performs a little better. Next, I wanna post Thunderbolt drives with Thunderbolt docks. In conclusion, considering even though CalDigit allows for better data transfer, OWC's updated ports and slightly faster charging, 
outweighs that small difference in transfer speed. So consider how much total you're paying for, including adapters you'll get separately. Which one will get you the most value with less adapters? I'm sticking to my OWC Thunbolt dock. But again, if you have any good info to sway us here to go with CalDigit, let us know in the comments below. I hope this example helped. If so, give it a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.